So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install uh, Python uh, on Windows 10 Professional. I haven't really tested on uh, Python uh, installation on a regular version of uh, Windows 10. So this is actually a Windows 10 Professional. So I don't have a copy of Windows 10. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to do an installation and we're going to go to python.org. And in python.org, you should see the download section. I'm going to click on it. and you should see the download for Windows. In, at this point in time, it's 3.9.4. So I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to save the file. So I'm using actually Firefox. So, so the installation has downloaded. So I'm going to show, go to the download section. And now I'm going to click on running the executable for the installation. Okay, actually there's two installs. So one is installed now for a local user and uh, I'm going to be installing for globally so that uh, all users on this machine have access to the Python. So this is not going to be installed now, it's going to be a customized install. And oops, let me go back a little bit. Also I want to make sure that the Python right is actually in the path. So I'm going to click on add Python 3.9 to the path and I'm going to do a customized install. So in the customized install documentation pip, everything is Python test suite, PyLauncher for all users, and that's okay. That's exactly what I want. Okay, so I want to make sure that I'm going to be installing for all users. And uh, notice the location of this. So if you do make a mistake, it's under, so my user account is under, well, Morali users, Morali app data, local programs, Python. Anyway, my home directory is here. This is my home directory. In there, there's a subdirectory called app data local, and in there, there's a programs. And so, by default, if you do install locally, it'll be installed in Python under programs, Python, Python 3.9, I guess. So, anyway, so, but I'm going to be installing for all users, so I'm going to click on the first line that says install for all users. And pre compile standard libraries, yes. So, let's click on uh, install now. If you do make a mistake, I'll show you later in a couple minutes uh, how to remove um, a, an install, a local install. So you can't see this, but it's asked me for the administrative password. So I'm going to type in the administrative password. So yes. And so after you've typed in your administrative password, you should get up to set up progress. This will take a uh, couple of minutes, but um, since the video is not long, I'll just let it run. So Python 3.9.4. Here's installing. It's chugging away. Okay, so uh, once we finished installing the Python, right, we're going to be testing it and make sure we have access from the command line. Um, most uh, uh, scientific research, you'll be getting access to Python on a remote machine, and the machine will actually be not a graphical user interface, much like we use in Windows. So you'll probably have access to a Linux machine that you SSH to. And because of that, right, it's very important that you start getting used to command line, uh, uh, well, shell. Well, shell execution statements. So at the command prompt, you have to type in shell commands. But uh, the shell that you use on Linux, right, tends to be like bash, um, well, bash, corn shell, C shell. There's a <laughs> born, anyway. Uh, anyway, there's uh, many different shells that you can get access to, but we're going to be using the CMD shell on Windows, which has a different set of commands. But you have to start getting used to command line arguments like as a as a person who's going to do scientific research. Okay, so here's our close. Anyway, so it should be installed. Well, I'm sorry, it should be installed, but we don't know. So I'm going to close this window. Close this window. And close this. And now I already have a command prompt installed in my startup and also on the um, task manager uh, taskbar at the bottom. Uh, 
but uh, I'll actually pretend that I don't have access to it. So let me uh, close these windows and uh, I'll remove it, unpin from taskbar, and I will unpin from start. I'm hitting the right context button for that. And here in the search bar, right, I'm going to type in CMD. And here. Now, before I click on command prompt, right, I'm going to actually hit it, pin to start, and pin to taskbar to get prepared for everything. And uh, so let's uh, make sure it's there. Notice it appears here in your startup menu in the windows. You also see it at the bottom, right, on your taskbar. So if you're set, let's go to clicking on the command prompt. Now there's actually a, a two major shells that you can use in Windows. Microsoft is pushing something called the PowerShell, which is much more newer, but it's a little more elaborate. And uh, I like simple things, so I'm going to stay with the CMD shell that's been around for many, many years. It's based on the command.com shell that uh, came out originally in Windows. But uh, anyway, so I'm using the CMD shell. That's the command prompt. And you should know some basic commands, but really, I really want to make sure Python is working. So I'm going to just type in Python. And there we go. And make sure you can do something. So here's some command finding the sum of 2 plus 3. And uh, if I want to find the power of, let's just make sure, 2 to the power of 16. Oh, hopefully 65,536. Great. We know it's uh, good. Good to go. So we can exit out of the shell, right, by typing in exit. And it is a function, so you can either type in exit or you can type in quit. Either is fine. So you can exit or you can control Z. Now, uh, once you have installed Python, right, it's probably a good idea now to uh, install the packages that we're going to be using. The packages that we want to use for Python for scientific computing will be basically uh, plotting libraries and uh, uh, array manipulation, large array manipulations of data. So which is actually just NumPy, SciPy, um, SimPy, uh, what else? Matplotlib, and um, what else? I can't think of anything else, but uh, I think that's basically it. Anyway, so um, you can don't uh, use pip and install locally. So you do have pip. It's the package um, index uh, program for uh, Python. It's, uh, it manages, pip manages the uh, packages installed on your computer for Python. Now you can use pip and run pip install, but if you do, uh, you'll actually install a local version of uh, the pip in your user account, local user account. And I want to install it globally for every user on this machine. So because of that, I'm going to hit the exit and close the shell type in exit just like in Python but remember in Python it's a function here it's just a, a DOS command uh, if you're wondering DOS DOS is uh, the old way of saying disk operating system <laughs> the old uh, Windows anyway so um, I'm hitting exit and now I'm going to start up the command prompt but in administrative mode so I'm going to hit the right context button and then under more you'll see there's something called to run as administrator and it might ask you password or it might not based on so I'm actually running as a different account so I have to type in password great now I have started up now be careful when you're actually in the administrative command prompt because uh, these files are important for running the operating system I typed in dir and actually it might be a little bit small so I'll just make it a little bit bigger so you can actually see this so I hit properties font uh, maybe 28 sounds good. Maybe, yeah, there you go. So you should know some basic commands, and one of the most basic is uh, change to a directory. So cd or chdir, the same thing. They mean both change directory. So I'm going to go to the root directory by backslash. Um, Unix and uh, Windows systems, right, they actually are different because... Uh, Windows tends to use backslash in, in path names, and uh, Unix uses slash. But uh, they both should work in, uh, as files. But I'm, okay, so they both should work on a Windows system. But uh, you really should be using a backslash instead of a forward slash. 
but on a Unix machine you'd be. So I'm changing a directory. You're gonna you the only reason I did this is that if I run a command, I don't want to make a mistake and delete important files in the Windows System 32 folder. So I've changed it to the root directory, and here is my root directory, it's a whole bunch of files there. And DIR is for directory listing. Okay. Um, so it's probably a good idea to work, uh, make a directory for Python so you can work in there. So I'll make a directory called Python, and uh, it's already there actually. I wonder what's in there. Okay, actually it's an old version of Python that I installed and I don't really have it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just remove the directory completely. Directory, Python, and slash s. It was an old installation that I just uh, forgot to remove. So anyway, so let me just remove it completely right now. Great. So anyway, so um, make a directory. Maybe I'll just call it Python so I can work in that directory. Oops, mkdir Python. But uh, it's, this is not necessary for the installation. It's just uh, so hopefully from our, now on, we'll always go into the Python folder to actually start up uh, and work in Python. So it's a standard location that all users will go into. So if you have multiple accounts that you've created for yourself, sometimes I do that. Um, you can go into uh, C colon Python to work in the projects. So um, let's now actually, uh, we are administrator. You can actually see this because it says administrator right on top. So we're at the administrator command prompt. Now I'm going to start running pip. So we need um, a pip and we're going to do an install on numpy. And uh, okay, that's actually installed. That's good. I'm going to make sure we do an install for uh, Let's see, SymPy, I want you guys to learn how to use SymPy, so I'll be using SymPy. Symbolic, uh, so it's already installed, great. And it's also install uh, uh, SciPy. Okay, that's already installed. And is there anything else? Yeah, matplotlib for plotting. Okay, that's already installed. Okay, and... Um, We'll also install Jupyter. So pip install Jupyter Notebooks. So we're going to be installing Jupyter. That's already installed. Great. Um, I think that's basically it. So we've, we've gotten into Administrator. We've installed uh, all the packages. And uh, you can actually do a pip list to see all the packages that are installed. And hopefully uh, there's some packages that uh, like Jupyter, uh, actually, IPython is installed too, so that's good. And um, matplotlib, numpy. So there's other dependencies that uh, were installed because a lot of these packages, they use other packages. And these packages get installed uh, so that, uh, like, well, your packages that you asked for, right, will run properly. Anyway, so that's already set. So let's exit out of this administrative window so I won't make a mistake by deleting uh, all the folders or something. Anyway, so let's start up and uh, let's go to the command prompt. And uh, I'm going to go into the Python folder. So cd python that I created early from the root directory. If you don't know these basic DOS commands, right, you should watch some YouTube videos. I can't recommend uh, any one because uh, they all seem to be the same. Um, but you'll get used to these uh, commands. So cd, notice the backslash. Uh, if this was, uh, you actually use a forward slash also. So uh, up to some commands, so <laughs> be careful. So uh, I'll try to use the backslash for Windows. Okay, so here I are. Here I am. That um, so it's a Python folder, and uh, we're going to start up Jupyter Notebooks. Now, actually, before I do that, let's go to uh, Python and uh, do some basic Python commands just to make sure you understand the basic idea. So there is a Python interpreter. It's called Python, and uh, make sure it says version three nine four that you installed. And uh, let's do some calculations. So three times four plus five. When you multiply, right, you have to multiply with an asterisk, so three times four plus five. 
and um, so this takes uh, so remember order of precedence right assigned in math order of precedence three times four comes first before before you add five so hopefully you remember those things so and uh, minus let's say six or minus six addition and um, let's say divided by three okay so we get an answer of 15 so let's just make sure so 12 plus 5 17 17 minus oh, 6 to 5 3 C so uh, uh, 2 sorry uh, 17 minus 2 is 15 it looks good if I want to save these results I'm hitting the up arrow key to repeat a, a statement so I can hit the up and down arrow key to actually see the last statement I typed in and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the uh, home and hit X equals so I'm stored into a variable called x and if I want to see the value of x I can print it out if you need help in something um, well actually so the most important thing about Python that you really have to know is like the basic commands are basically um, like you'll pick it up on the way so don't uh, don't go crazy trying to spend uh, all your time trying to learn a new language you'll pick it up on the way for scientific computing you don't tend to do um, a much a lot of uh, uh, really Integrate Python coding, so um, it's not really necessary. You'll learn it on uh, as you uh, go along. So now I do need to know, load up these libraries. These packages, right in Python, these packages are referred to libraries that are written in other languages. <clears throat> so, for example, NumPy, SciPy, SimPy. So, if you want to use any of these packages, right, you're going to have to use the import command. What the import command does, right, is loads up the library into memory, and so it's accessible from Python. So I'm going to import the NumPy library, and so I'm going to import. Now there's more advanced commands, like we can simplify NumPy and use symbolic representation for the symbol NumPy, but I really don't want to do that because uh, uh, you're watching this video probably just to make sure you understand like a basic uh, setup and testing of um, Python. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to just say NumPy, import NumPy, and if I want something in NumPy, for example, let's say I would like to find the the sign of the variable x, uh, which in this case 15, I can find it, and there's also a cosine. In so we access all of the functions and objects and um, well whatever objects in uh, NumPy by uh, typing in the name of the package that you import it. And the symbol so cosine and sine and if you really need help in any of these packages you should have a like question mark and oops maybe ipython does that so well, actually let me go and uh, try it out so anyway so let me exit out of uh, python and ipython was installed so let me show you ipython instead IPython stands for Interactive Python. It's a better version of Python, but it gives you a lot of extra help. For example, let's do an import and NumPy that I typed in earlier. And let's try NumPy and a question mark. Now we get information, the document string associated with NumPy, which I didn't have access to with the regular Python. But uh, um, so if you need to see some commands, so if I remember NumPy and I want to see all of the commands that are available, um, objects look if available in the NumPy package, right? I can hit the tab key, Todd, NumPy dot, I hit the tab key and you'll get a list of, uh, uh, a list of all the possibilities. But uh, let's uh, start off assuming I know it's sign. So I'll try S and hitting the tab key and you should have a, uh, a list of possible choices. So uh, let me try SIN, getting closer. Here's sign. And if you really don't know what the sign function is, you can put a question mark at the end and hit documentation. And Q is to quit, as so you should be able to read through the menu. Actually, uh, so we won't really be using IPython or Python because uh, we really want to get some access to some graphical user interface and we're going to be using uh, Jupyter Notebooks. So I'm going to hit the exit, and uh, so I'm in the Python folder that I've created earlier. So I'm going to type in Jupyter and then Notebook. And so if you install Jupyter and everything, we should get to the uh, Jupyter runtime environment. So this Jupyter environment, right, we're going to create a new Python 
notebook. So I'm going to click it. It's going to start up a, a Python kernel that's running with Python on the back end. And if you're wondering, right, you should be able to see it, uh, the startup. So what happened was when I went to the command shell and typed in Jupyter Notebook right here, it started up a server. And this, uh, it's, well, I guess, it, well, you can read through it. It's uh, serving out notebooks. These notebooks, right, are connected to Python kernels. So the kernels that we've installed, right, are basically Python. So, I'm sorry, kernels. And uh, this Python kernel, right, there are other kernels that uh, we have access to, but we'd have to install those kernels. Uh, they can be, uh, if I remember correctly, there's, um, uh, there's, there's a couple of kernels, but um, yeah, anyway, it doesn't really matter. There are different version kernels, and I can look it up in Jupyter's notebooks and find out what kernels are available. But um, we're using Python. So don't close this window because you'll close the notebook and kernel the back end. And what this, this server does, right, is basically a web server and it's uh, displaying your results in your web page. Okay, so we started up a notebook and I'm going to actually save this notebook, save as, and we'll start it off saying this is my hello notebook and save. So everything I type in will be when we hit the save, it's going to be saved in this notebook. I'm going to start up another command shell by going to the command prompt and clicking command. And I'm going to go back to the Python folder and you can actually see what happened. So when we first started the IPython, the, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Jupyter Notebook at Python, it created a notebook called entitled.ipynb. It stands for Interactive Python Notebook. It was actually uh, Jupyter was originally based on um, IPython, and uh, so some of the terminologies are still in there. So this is actually an uh, IPython notebook, <laughs> interactive Python notebook. Anyway, so it's a historical thing. You don't really need this IPYNB checkpoints, but uh, the, uh, the, the kernel is actually saving stuff in the background. Your, um, your Jupyter server is actually saving stuff in the background, so don't do anything with this folder until uh, you exit out. But the main thing is that uh, all of your calculation stuff will be saved in this IPython notebook. So you can actually give this to somebody else and they can see your work and calculations that you've done. And so this is the modern idea of like uh, transporting uh, information from one user to another. We, we basically save our calculations, our results, our documentation in this notebook and uh, save our res I, this notebook and then give it to the next person, the next scientist or next user and they can continue your work or uh, understand at least what you've done. So when you open up your Jupyter notebook, right, you'll actually see that uh, these are called cells. Now Notice the color in the cell. If I hit the escape key, it turns blue. When I hit to, when I go into the cell by pressing the enter key or clicking, you'll notice it's green. When it's green, you're actually manipulating the cell. When I'm here, right, and I hit the escape key, I'm in actually a command mode. These ideas seem to be uh, based on VI, but um, anyway, so I happen to be, uh, I use uh, VI, which is um, an editor on found on Unix machines for remote for uh, it's a text editor so um, so I know these commands <laughs> anyway so escape always gets you to command mode and uh, clicking gives you the green which means you're now manipulating what I'd like to do is like the same commands that I did earlier let's uh, so I multiply two numbers together and I uh, and I subtracted by six divided by three if I remember and now, if you press enter, right, nothing will happen. Okay, I'm hitting a back drum. So what you need to do is execute the cell. We can execute in a couple of ways. We can execute the shell cell and see the result without leaving the cell by holding the control key down and pressing enter. And again, press enter to get back into the cell. So again, control enter. So if I have to make changes, right, So this is a, so we get back to a statement. So control enter. If you want to go to a new cell, execute the cell and, ex, and um, 
um, go to a new cell, we're going to hit shift and press enter. Okay. Now the basic command for input or output in Python is actually the print statement. So you should actually be trying to have the print statement. But uh, if you have a single line statement, you just want to execute, you can just type it in and hit control enter and uh, see the result. Here I'm going to type in a print statement. I'm going to do some calculations. And so let me introduce you to the power statement. So let's calculate 2 to the power of uh, uh, 4. So 2 to the power of 4, 2 to the exponent of 4, right, is 16. So hit, let's say control enter, we can see the result. Now, so py print is a statement in Python, so I'm using Python. Let's imagine that we'd like to save the result in something. So let's create a variable x, much like earlier. And uh, I'll take 4 times 3 plus 3 minus 6 divided by 2. And I'm going to save the result in the variable x. So if I hit control enter, it gets saved, but a new variable gets created. Now, just to show you that it does exist, now if you need to create a new cell, you can actually go to cell and, uh, uh, let's see, where is it? Insert, I'm sorry. Insert cell above and insert cell below. So A and B, you can type in A and B in the command, command uh, uh, mode. So I'm hitting the escape key a couple of times, and if I want to insert something below, I can hit B. And uh, if I want to delete a cell actually from VI, right, you can actually hit DD. So DD actually deletes a cell. There's a list of commands that you can find on the internet, right, about how to use Jupyter, how to move the keyboard and select things much more quickly. But uh, uh, get used to it. Uh, just learn on the way. Don't try to memorize everything. So, Predominantly, most of the things that you learn 90% of the time are just a couple of statements. So anyway, if you want to cell above this, you can hit the A. And if I want to delete the cell, DD. So I'm going to hit a cell below, and I'm going to print out the value of X. Oops, below. And uh, I'm hitting the Enter key, and uh, I'm going to type in uh, the symbol X. Actually, it's Control Enter, so that's 12. Now, if I want to calculate x to the power x, the answer is this. So we're taking 12 to the power 12. Okay, so basic Python commands. But uh, let's now import a library. Let's import the um, SciPy library. Actually, not SciPy, let's try SymPy. And so this library gets loaded into memory and we have access to all the symbols and objects and things inside the SymPy library by SymPy. I'm hitting control and enter. Hopefully you s it so it executed, nothing failed. Actually let's try something that we didn't install like Psi. So if I hit you'll notice that you'll get errors. Okay so you have it installed so you don't have to run this command again but um, I'll leave it in there so you can actually see it, and I'll run it over again. So let's put another cell. Uh, I'll create a new variable. Let's call it uh, uh, x. So I'm going to be overwriting the x that I already have 12 in. So this is a Python symbol x, and I'm going to associate it with a... SymPy is an example of um, a CAS system, computer algebra system. And so I'm going to be using SymPy to identify a symbol called x in the uh, computer algebra system. So this symbol x right here is not to be confused with a Python's variable called x. We're just associating this variable x in Python with the symbol that's used in SymPy. And uh, so here we go. So I'm going to go and create, um, I executed with control enter. And actually let me execute it with the shift enter so you can see the cells, uh, a new cell appear constantly. So if I want to see what uh, x squared looks like, it is the function x squared. So this is the new set of symbols called x squared. Okay, let me hit shift enter actually. <laughs> so you can actually see the result. So if I want to simpy plot this function, I can do simpy dot uh, plot and let's plot x squared. I'm I hit control enter and got a habit into doing that. So let me hit shift enter so I can get a new cell at the bottom. So this is the plot of this. Uh, actually, how long is the recording thus far? OK, 
Yeah, so I've, uh, I've executed this for 30 minutes, so it's kind of a long... Uh... Anyway, so uh, yeah, so let's make it a little more complicated. Let's create a function and uh, let's take the um, x. So sine and cosine are not part of um, regular Python language. So they're actually part of different uh, packages or libraries. So there is a sympy.sign. Actually, let's make it uh, sympy.sign at x divided by x. OK? And uh, keep hitting Control Enter, but Shift Enter so I get a new cell. And uh, let's do a plot on this. So sympy has a plot plotting a function so that we can plot y and take a look at it. So this is actually the uh, sine over x, or the sync function. This is what the sync function looks like. Let's do an integration of a sync function. Uh, we can't do uh, an integration uh, with the sync function. Uh, actually, that's like, let me do a, let me try out something so you can understand. It. So if you want to integrate something, let's say SynPy does have an integration, so we can do symbolic integration. So we can just say integrate and uh, x squared and with respect to x. So this is a SymPy integration. I'm hitting control enter. So it, this is an integration of x cubed for 3. If I need to make sure that x lies in an interval from something, I'll just say it is in a list starting from, let's integrate from 0 to maybe x itself. Or how about x squared? Oops. Actually, let's make it really simple. Let's make it 1. <laughs> OK, so this is going to integrate uh, x squared in an interval from uh, 0 to 1. OK, so control enter. It's actually 1 third. So, um, and if I need to make it a little more complicated, let's integrate from x equals 0 all the way up to x squared. And whatever the answer is, I'm going to say this is equal to, let's call it, Z. It executed, but we don't see a result, so we can actually say print Z. But if you use the print function from from uh, Python, from Python, you won't see a uh, formatting proper proper formatting of everything. Instead, let's format this in terms of an output. So we can either type in Z by itself, and you'll see the formatting of x6 over 3. But if you do print, right, Python, uh, the print is only for command, uh, console shells. So if I really want to um, integrate this with, uh, a, we can actually use a couple of methods uh, called uh, Z, or we can use the method that's integrated for Jupyter, which is called display. And I'll using display z, and that'll give you the same result. Okay, so uh, okay, so I think that's basically it. But uh, this video is getting a little bit too long, so uh, I think it's already exceeded um, about 30 minutes. So uh, anyway, let me save the result. File, save. Oops. File, save, and checkpoint. <laughs> Great. And uh, I'm going to hit the logout and to close the user interface. And uh, this shell that's running, we can close it by hitting Control C. Hold the Control key down and hit the Control C. And it closes. It's all done. Okay. So the kernel can actually be running without a user interface. So uh, you could have uh, multiple things running um, in the background while you close your user interface. But uh, Anyway, it, this should get you started done using Python. And you can exit out by typing in exit, exit.